I'd like to demonstrate a little bit in the video. Uh, you may not uh, have access to LabVIEW at home. I uh, wanted to show you the LabVIEW demo uh, illustrating the effects of aliasing. So if we consider the uh, input signal uh, is a simple sine wave shown in white. Uh, we're going to sample that input signal at uh, a certain frequency. Um, if the input frequency is 100 hertz, we're going to say we're going to go 75% of that, so 75 hertz. And what we measure is the red line or our output signal. And you can see here the red line doesn't really fit the input very well at all. Um, but if we were to happen to believe this was true, for example, you can't always just see your input. What would be the point of measuring it if we already knew what it looked like? So if we hide the input, uh, this is what we can measure in LabVIEW, and very well we could believe this is true and we're actually detecting a frequency of 25 hertz. Now, uh, you saw the input, so you know it's just false, but uh, initially, if you were to take this measurement, you may believe this is a true, and you got a, uh, this is just a, we got some poor um, uh, data points, but if we met in our mind imagine uh, passing a sine wave of 25 hertz through this data, we could think, well, we, we must be collecting a, a signal well enough and, and move on. In reality, we're not. To show this, we could increase the measurements just slightly. Well, maybe I'll take it back down and go to, let's say, 0.9. Well, now we've increased our frequency to 90% of the input, so really we dialed in to sample at 90 hertz. And now it looks like a really good sine wave, but really the, the frequency of this wave we're picking up is 10 hertz. Now the input hasn't changed at all, but what we're measuring is we only get certain data points every time we sample, and so we're not sampling fast enough to really capture the input frequency. And to tell that something's wrong, you can just keep changing frequency until the detected frequency stopped changing. And right now we saw that it changed, so we could try something that's like, let's go to 0.95. Well, now it looks totally different. We have a detected frequency of 12.3. Uh, if we go even higher, let's try 1.1. Now we're sampling at a multiple of 1.1. So our input's 100 hertz. Output, uh, we're sampling uh, at 110%. So we're going to sample it at 110 hertz. You see, again, it looks like a nice sine wave, but our detective frequency keeps changing. Uh, try again at 1.3. Well, now this looks just kind of funny. And again, our detective frequency is still, um, still changing, and it doesn't look right. Um, and you can see again, it's still, we still have the same exact input. We just happen to be sampling different parts of the waves and connecting the dots, and it looks like a funny input wave. Now, if you remember from the notes, the requirement is we need uh, Nyquist frequency is twice the largest input frequency. Well, we only have one input frequency of 100 hertz, so twice that is 200 hertz. We need to sample at least twice the input frequency in order to capture the, or detect the correct uh, input frequency. Uh, so we could try getting close. Well, maybe if we don't go twice the input, maybe let's go to 1.9. So now, this is a really interesting looking wave. Um, we're sampling at 190 hertz, and you can see we're still sampling that wave, but when we connect the dots, the frequency, or the, if we were to sit a, fit a sine wave through those dots, yeah, the, the frequency would be 89 hertz, and so it's still not correct. We know the answer is 100 hertz. Nyquist frequency is greater than twice the largest input frequency, so we need to have a multiple of at least greater than 2 in order to detect the, the, the correct input frequency. Um, so if we change this, let's try exactly 2. You can see here, oof, something's going on. We look at our input, uh, when we sample exactly twice the input, 
what you end up getting is you get a sample at the beginning of the wave, halfway through the wave, and then back to the beginning of the next wave. And, and because you're just having to go exactly twice as fast, and you end up almost get this flat line that obviously doesn't look correct. Uh, so if we try going just a little bit faster, a little bit be uh, a little better, we can see we're getting a lot closer to the 100 hertz. Um, if we want to go even higher, now 2.2. We're detecting the right frequency, uh, sampling at 220 hertz. Uh, but you can see it doesn't really look anything like the real input. If I show you the input again, um, we're capturing the frequency content, but not really the amplitude content. Um, you see we only capture the peaks maybe here and here, a couple places, so we can kind of get the amplitude. If we really want to get both frequency and amplitude, we really need to be much greater than 2, uh, I'd even suggest maybe 10 times uh, the input. So if we change this to 10 here, you can see now we're starting to get a lot more data representing the, uh, the input frequency and amplitude. You can see here, if I change our multiplier, the more and more, or the faster I collect the data, uh, the detected frequency isn't changing. So obviously we must have uh, captured the correct input frequency. Now we're just getting a better idea of what the amplitude is like. But again, if we go anywhere below that Nyquist, anything below 2 or equal to 2, then we lose the input frequency and we don't capture the correct input signal. I hope that helps uh, understanding a little bit about aliasing and how, really, if you're not aware, because we can't see our inputs, um, if we don't know what we're doing, we don't have a good idea of the range of frequencies we're in, uh, you can get a really bad measurement without knowing it. The best way to uh, account for this is uh, continue to increase the input or the measurement frequency until you see that it no longer changes as you increase it. Then you'll know, all right, I'm capturing the right frequency. I can tone it back down a little bit to not collect so many data points and have to store it in such a large spreadsheet or file.